Hello friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, I'm actually here to uh, continue a conversation within the program of Stretch Your Dollar, Stretch Your Food series. This is actually second to the last session uh, of our series and we have started uh, you know, uh, from talking about organizing our pantry, making the best use of what we have and save money that way. And then we dive deeper into individual food groups such as grains, proteins, fruits and vegetables, fats. Last week, we taught, Nicole actually talked about snacks. Uh, and today, we are actually going to tackle dairy group and a plant-based milk group. So I'm very excited to present this session with you. But before that, I just wanted to th thank all of you who have supported both Nicole and I, uh, and you know, viewed our uh, videos and shared our videos uh, with your clientele or with uh, your friends and family. Uh, we truly appreciate that. And I hope that you continue to support us uh, and our Lower Shore uh, Facebook page, because this is not the end. Even if this series ends, we're still going to share wealth of information for you uh, and with you uh, for our community members. So I hope you stick in there and uh, give us your support and love. Uh, all right, so uh, before I dive into the content, I just want to introduce myself real quick. My name is Truthi Patel and I'm a family and consumer sciences educator with the University of Maryland Extension. So what do I do? I basically conduct nutrition, health, wellness, stress management and food preservation based program within our community. And so my goal as an educator is to bring in all the scientific information uh, to our community members in a much more uh, understandable, much more interactive, and much more comprehensible manner. So um, my programs tends to be very interactive in nature, but this is the world we are living in right now. Uh, and I hope that uh, the information we are sharing with Nicole and I is, has been helpful to you. Um, so let's talk about today's session. So again, as I said, we are actually going to talk about dairy products and plant-based pro milk products. Um, I just want to clarify on that, that even though, uh, you know, I'm identifying them as two, um, I don't want to get into terminology differences between plant-based milk and dairy milk, mostly because uh, dairy in itself comes from a different source and plant-based comes from a different source. So I wanted to keep them separated till we have a better understanding of where they're coming from and what's the overall difference between the two and what options we have as a consumer. Uh, so, okay. So in this session, we are going to look through what the, some of those dairy products are, why they are so important for our diet, um, and some of the substitution uh, you know, for those dairy groups, uh, and why they, what makes them special. We are also going to look at some of the dietary guidelines, uh, all the way starting from an infancy to the adulthood, you know, how much dairy uh, food group uh, we should be consuming on an everyday basis, we are also going to uh, look into some of the differences between uh, the lactose intolerance and a food sensitivity related to dairy products. We're gonna learn a little bit about it. What's the difference and what makes them so separated and what you can do uh, about that uh, from where you are. Uh, we are also going to dive deeper into one of my favorite dairy focused recipe and right now it's a perfect time to have that recipe. So I hope you actually give that a try and if you do, please make sure you share your own recipe and your own versions. We would love to hear from you. Okay, so let's get into the content now. Okay, so let's start with introduction. So as per USDA guideline, uh, dairy is considered as all fluid milk products and many food items that is made from milk that, is, that retains that calcium level. Um, they may be yogurt, they may be cheese, uh, they're, they're both considered as part of a dairy group. Um, in this group, uh, they also have included calcium fortified soy milk. Um, and again, this is a good option for people who are slightly sensitive to, uh, to uh, lactose and or have some kind of allergy related to lactose. So uh, again, this is uh, another um, type of uh, soy milk is another type of milk considered as part of this group. Cream cheeses, 
cream, butter are not considered as part of dairy. They're mostly considered as a, fat, a part of a fats group, mostly because of the lower content and calcium level. They do not con contribute to added calcium in our diet. So that's why they are not considered as part of a dairy group. Again, this is very subjective. In a, in a regular day life, you know, this, this might not be a concern for us, but I just wanted to clarify that by USDA standards and guidelines, these items are dairy versus not dairy. So just keep an eye on that. Okay, now what is actually a plant-based milk and juice? Uh, again, you can use whichever term you prefer to. Uh, I just like to separate them by sources. Dairy comes from cows uh, and other uh, animal sources and plant-based are comes from the plant source. So again, uh, where do they come from? They're non-dairy, of course. They, are, they come from plant sources such, such as nuts, seeds uh, and uh, you know some of the oil seeds uh, that can actually produce milk uh, or the juice for that. Nowadays you are seeing plethora of options available at the grocery store which provides you not just variations in the type of uh, these plant-based milks but also within each of them different variations with it. For example with flavoring, uh, for example we have almond milks unsweetened sweetened when with vanilla uh, with coconut milk too you will see all those variations so we have so many options and it can be very daunting and so hopefully by end of this presentation it gives you a little bit of perspective on what kind of milk you should be uh, you know trying out for your lifestyle okay um, these kind of milks or juices are very very good for people who have um, you know, dairy related sensitivity, or they are having allergies related to it. And we're going to dive deeper into it later, but perfect for them because, uh, you know, they cannot tolerate the lactose sugar or the protein present in the milk. So good option for them. Uh, is it the same nutritionally? No. I mean, it, it depends on what milk you're looking at. So we are going to dive deeper into each of them. Uh, it's a very good, uh, you know, um, option for someone who is following a vegan or vegetarian lifestyle and who, who do not consume any dairy products. So that can be a good option. Um, it also provides a very varied amount of flavor profile in your food uh, and also textures and taste. So think about almond milk having that nuttiness in it and adding that nuttiness to a beverage. Uh, versus coconut milk, which adds more creamy texture in your uh, in your product, uh, or your soups and stews and things like that. So, again, there is so many varieties you can go by. So. Uh, think of it this way. We also have oat milk, actually, uh, that is very light, um, and it's uh, very light to the stomach uh, for digestion, too. Uh, so again, every milk has its own flavor composition and its own usage. So you can play around with it to see which one you prefer a little bit more. Um, sometimes uh, these plant-based, because, the, uh, because of their, uh, their, from what they're extra extracted from, their nutritional profile uh, changes a lot too. For example, unsweetened animal milk is much more lesser in calories, if that's your concern. Uh, and uh, it is actually higher in unsaturated fats, who tends to be more heart healthy. So if you are one of those individuals who are trying to keep an eye on overall calorie consumption on everyday basis, or if you have heart conditions, or do you have a higher cholesterol level, uh, high blood pressure, uh, this might be one of the options you want to try because it is high in uh, some of the heart healthy fats. So just an idea uh, for you to explore um, about these uh, kinds of milks. Okay, so we talked about, I, I use these terms like toes intolerance and dairy allergy. So what is the, the difference between the two? They are not the same, by the way. That's the very first thing you need to remember. The second very important thing you need to remember is that you have to use caution. If uh, the, some, um, uh, the kind of description I'm about to provide you relates uh, to your symptoms that you're noticing, uh, talk to your healthcare provider. Talk to them that you know, maybe you are experiencing some of this. Uh, how should you tackle it? And they can go ahead and investigate further for you to see if you know, you're having one of these uh, you know, allergies or intolerance. Um, so always talk to your healthcare professional uh, when, when it comes to health conditions like that. So 
let's go uh, into individual components. So let's start with dairy allergy. Dairy allergy is something that is actually created because of, you, um, because of an immune response to a specific protein present in dairy. So it, it is basically your body's uh, immune system retaliating against a protein present in your body. And so it is going to show you symptoms very similar to some of the allergic reactions such as rash, hives, swelling in the lips and the face area near the eyes too, wheezing, having difficulty breathing or labored breathing, tightness in the throat is another one, and trouble swallowing because of the feeling of that tightness. Uh, so again, if you, if you look at these symptoms, they're very common, uh, you know, against uh, uh, other allergies too. So they show up in the rest of your body. They are not specific to uh, any specific kind of organ uh, or organ system at one point. They are very generalized allergy symptoms, right? In, uh, in other, uh, other way, uh, lactose intolerance differs by, because it is very much uh, geared towards our digestive system. And so what you mean by that is there is an uh, enzyme produced within your digestive system, specifically your small intestine, which helps to digest lactose uh, sugar that is present naturally within milk. So individuals who are suffering from those intolerances tends to have limited amount of lactase uh, enzyme or they have a complete absence of this enzyme. So because of that, they are unable to digest the lactose that they are drinking through dairy product or consuming through dairy, dairy product, right? So it is going to look, uh, if, if a person is uh, suffering from intolerance, uh, it's gonna look very different uh, when it comes to symptoms. So what those are, are diarrhea, uh, nausea, uh, sometimes vomiting, abdominal cramps, and bloating and gas. So you're noticing between the two, the symptoms are very different. With intolerance, it's very much focused on our gut-related um, symptoms, more like, uh, you know, uh, related to our digestive system, uh, whereas the allergy is more to do with generalized allergy-related symptoms. So if you're noticing any, or if you're speculating that this might be the reason, uh, please talk to your doctor and get their consult and see what they have to say and investigate it further with them. So now let's look into daily dairy <laughs> recommendation. That's a little tongue twister, isn't it? Uh, so let's start with our children. Uh, we have uh, between two to three years of age. The dairy recommendation is two cups and for four to eight, it's two and a half cups. For girls uh, from the age group nine till 18, it's three cups or uh, three servings. For boys, it's the same, as you can see, three cups for nine to 18 years of age. For women, uh, starting from uh, 19 years of age all the way to the 15 years, it's three cups again. And for the men, it stays the same. So as you can see, since the, since the start of the time uh, of nine years, all the way to 50 and plus, both uh, men and women should be consuming three cups of any kind of dairy, uh, recommended dairy amount. So this is very, very important because dairy brings in a lot of calcium in our diet and protein too. Um, so it's very, very important to consume uh, dairy products or other calcium fortified plant-based milk if that's that's the option you're selecting for yourself all right so now we are going to look into uh, different types of milk and I am only going to focus on dairy group which includes dairy uh, dairy related milks and soil milk right Mostly because if I start looking into plant-based milk, it's going to be a long list and we'll be sitting here for a very long time and I don't want to take too much of your time. So I just wanted to bring a perspective on, you know, nutrition label. This is your best friend when it comes to looking at any food item that you eat. Um, and especially with milk because there's just so many options available, right? That we have a whole aisle just focusing on milk. So that, that tells you something. Uh, so let's start with four options here. So on, the, on your extreme left, you have a whole milk, um, and then you have a 2% milk, 1% milk, and then you have uh, your unsweetened soy milk. So let's start with whole milk, uh, start with calorie, compare the calories uh, for all these four products. 
So as you can see, and uh, you know, most likely we all agree that whole milk contains highest amount of fats in it, which is 150 calories. Uh, our 2% milk contains about 130 calories. Uh, for 1%, it's 110. And for our soy, ba soy milk, it's actually even lesser. Um, it's literally close to half of the uh, whole milk, which is 80%. Uh, so that is that says something, right? So very, very important. Uh, let's look at the fat content because again, when it comes to whole milk and low fat milk, that's the main uh, nutritive value you want to pay attention to, right? So let's start with the whole milk. On the whole milk side, we have a total fat of eight grams, which is 10%. Well, and of that, 25% of that total fat is contributed by saturated fats. Now, saturated fats, if you haven't seen my uh, video on fats, go back and have a look at it. I talk about that in, in very detail about what makes it uh, not so heart healthy. So again, but just in a nutshell, saturated fats tend to actually create a lot of issues with heart in terms of uh, increasing our bad cholesterol level, um, you know, in, uh, cause, uh, you know, put, puts us in a, you know, at risk of heart disease and stroke. So it's not so heart healthy fat. So this is something that you want to, this kind of fat, you want to limit as much as possible. So again, as you can see in whole milk, it's about 25% of overall daily requirements. So that's very high, right? Even with the cholesterol, it adds 10% of the cholesterol. If you're having one serving, one serving, which is one cup uh, of whole milk. On the other hand, we have 2% milk, and it is slightly less as, uh, as the title say 2%, right? 8% of total fat, and of that, 15% is uh, the saturated fats. Again, that's 10% down, so that's, that's a good you know, step. Um, the uh, next one is a cholesterol level, which is 7%. Again, it's slightly more down, so that's, again, great option if, you know, if you're transitioning into having more low-fat milk. Uh, on the 1% uh, milk, we have total fat of 4%. Very good. It's less than half of, half of what we had for whole milk, right? Uh, saturated fat is about 8%. Again, significantly low, right? Uh, and with cholesterol, we have 4%. Again, less than half, half of what uh, you know, whole, uh, whole, um, whole milk had. Uh, and now let's look at soy, bean, uh, soy milk, sorry. I keep saying soy bean, but it's soy milk. Uh, so in soy milk, we have 5% of total fat, which is half of whole milk overall, right? Um, saturated fat is also very low, it's just 3%. Cholesterol is literally zero. And part of the reason is that soy bean in general does not have any cholesterol in it because it's, it's coming from plants. Plants in general don't tend to have cholesterol. They may have other types of fats present in them, but cholesterol tends to mostly come from animal sources, may be dairy, may be meat products or eggs or uh, seafood or any other kinds of food. So it, it tends to come from those sources, uh, animal sources. And because soy milk is plant-based, that's why the cholesterol level is zero. Again, amazing uh, choice if you, you, know, you are a person who have a slightly higher cholesterol level and you have been asked by your doctor to restrict the amount of cholesterol you have daily. So good option. The next nutrient you want to look at when you're looking at your milk is protein, right? As I said before, uh, your milk does provide a lot of protein, so it contributes to protein. Um, so with whole milk, it is giving you 88, 8 grams, which is 16%. With 2%, again, the protein remains the same. All throughout, all the dairy uh, milk is actually the same. In soya milk, it's just one gram less. So again, it's very, very similar in a protein profile if you look uh, protein content. Uh, you know, if you look at it, it's just one gram less. So it's, it's, it's good enough, it's comparable. Um, and the last but not the least, very important nutrient and why USDA tells us, tells us encourages us to have uh, dairy uh, you know, products is because of calcium. So calcium content in whole milk is about 30 percent uh, that's a really good amount and if you think about this is just one serving if you're eating three sir uh, three cups like what uh you know 
um, the recommendation said, you, you are reaching 90%. So now you just have to cope up with 10% through the rest of the things. Great idea, right? Uh, on the other hand, uh, look at the others too, like with the 2% and 1%, calcium isn't changing here. Right, so protein and calcium remains the same. So all the good nutrients you actually want from coming from your milk remains consistent. Uh, you know, even if you're taking two percent or one percent, which is a very, very good, very good thing uh, when it comes to consumption of dairy. And let's look at the soy milk. Soy milk is about fifteen percent, so it's half of calcium. Right now, let me caution you on one thing: that the the label I'm using did not specify that it was calcium fortified and calcium fortification may vary from brand to brand. Uh, sometimes they do create a product which is equivalent to calcium content in the actual dairy milk too. So again, this is the time where you have to be your food label detective and look through those options and make sure that if you choose to buy soy milk, um, you're looking at that calcium specification and it should be close enough to the dairy so that you're having enough of calcium. I know it's a lot and it takes time to look through the label, but the more you do it, the better you get at it and the less time it's going to take for you with time, with the more you do it. So, you know, try, give it a try. You know, I always say this to any of my audience that start with one item within your grocery that you buy consistently. Start by just uh, paying attention to that label when you go to the grocery store and have a look at it. And then start adding one every week so that you get practice of looking at the label. It, it doesn't take as long as you may think it may. So again, give it a try, you know, even right now, after this video, if you want, go to your pantry, open your refrigerator and see, you know, what milk you have and just have a look at the nutrition label just to educate yourself on what you're consuming. You have a power to select what you consume and the best way to make that decision is by looking at the label. All right, so now we talk about serving sizes. This tends to be one of the very hot topics that most of my audience always want to know, uh, especially, uh, you know, uh, in the dairy because they just, they're just inundated by all the options we have available. Dairy and meat products too. Uh, all right, so let's start with a one cup. Uh, so one, the easiest thing is one cup and eight ounces for liquid-based milk or plant-based milk. So that's the, that's the golden line you have to remember. Eight ounces, fluid ounces, or one cup. Uh, for uh, hard cheeses, uh, you know, it's about one and a half ounces or one slice or half a cup of hard cheese. Uh, if it's shredded, then it's one third of a cup. Um, if you're using ricotta cheese, then it's a half a cup and uh, two cups of cottage cheese. Cottage cheese is underrated, amazing dairy ingredient that I hope you give it a try. I'm going to give you some recipe ideas on that. But please, if you can try it, 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 it is not, I mean, most likely you're going to use it on your vegetables as a dip and things like that. But have you ever tried spreading cottage cheese uh, instead of ricotta cheese or adding half of ricotta, low fat ricotta and cottage cheese and put it on your lasagna and it will still taste delicious. Nobody will know that you have actually added cottage cheese because of all the flavors that it gives you. And you're still getting great amount of calcium from cottage cheese and low amount of fat. So again, it's a great replacement. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, the snack uh, or yogurt, uh, the small containers we get, you know, just one container is good enough. It's six ounces. Um, or one snack container is like a four ounce or one cup. So, you know, that's, that's uh, one more serving that you're adding. Yogurts are, again, you have so much variety, but again, you know, it's also added, there is a lot of added sugar in it too, many times. So look at the label, find the one that provides you good nourishment without excess sugar added in it. Uh, Two ounces of processed cheese can be considered as one serving too. So that's another, um, you know, serving size information. Okay. So for desserts, if you're using pudding, it's one cup of serving. If you're using frozen yogurt, it's one cup or one bar because sometimes you get frozen yogurt in a stick form too, like popsicle. So, you know, that's one, uh, one serving too. Uh, and then ice cream is one and a half cup. Uh, for, and that is actually equivalent to one scoop. Um, 
with for soya milk, if it's calcium fortified milk, then it's one cup. And uh, plant-based milk is the same, one cup and eight fluid ounces. So overall, if you're using any kind of milk, most likely it's going to be eight fluid ounces and one cup serving. So have a look at that. And if you, if you don't uh, remember this, or if you need to reconfirm, always look at your nutrition fact. It'll tell you exactly how much you're supposed to have one serving. Uh, per serving. Now, again, uh, this may vary. Like when a, uh, a serving size is created, a ser is created based on an average American diet, right? Maybe you do not fit into that bracket. Maybe your requirements are much higher. Maybe you are aspiring athlete, or you're a very active person, uh, or you uh, your in, uh, overall dietary requirement is much higher. Or you need to, uh, you know, uh, maybe. Um, work on the weight management side of things. So you're serving, uh, you know, the amount that you need on everyday basis might be very different. Each of us have a very separate lifestyle, very, which is very unique to us. So if you have very specific question based on your lifestyle, go seek help from the nutritionist or a dietitian because they make individual plan that fits you as a person. These are just a general guidelines based on general American diet. So uh, I just wanted to uh, make, uh, make it very clear about that because many people think that this is how much they're supposed to have. Um, this is just a guideline. You take it and then if you want to dive deeper into it, then you go talk to experts and they can help you out finding even, dive even deeper to help you with what you truly need. Okay, so now my favorite part, uh, replacing high fat milk to other uh, and milk products. So again, uh, many people think that certain items should not be changed and ingredients should not be changed. Why? That might be right many times, but it's not right all the time uh, until you actually give it a try. Um, so let's see some of the things you can actually try replacing uh, and how you can actually do that. One thing I do want to uh, you know, talk about though before I even dive into this is that take things slow when it comes to making changes. Um, I'll just give you my example. Uh, for my entire life, I always had whole milk. And so, of course, I preferred whole milk over skim milk the one time I tried it. So I did not enjoy that. However, because I'm a nutritionist, I knew that you know, I needed to keep track of how much fats I'm consuming. And I needed to go back to the route of having low fat milk. So what I started doing was in the beginning, I started mixing proportions of two different kinds of milk. So for example, I used uh, in my one cup, I used about two thirds of a cup uh, with uh, whole milk and just one third was actual skim milk um, I added. And then as I got comfortable with that, I started changing the ratio to the point where now I'm at the place that I'm completely comfortable having skim milk. In fact, I truly enjoy that because of the fact that it's so light um, and it's just very easy on the, uh, on the tummy and digestive system. So I'm actually enjoying skim milk more than whole milk. If you would have asked me about 12 years ago uh, that if I would ever do that, I would have said no. <laughs> but I have because I have made those slower changes. So don't try to make abrupt changes because you have cultivated these habits for over the period of time. And so it is going to take time and patience to practice and try something new. And this doesn't just apply to trying on transitioning into lower fat milk products. It, uh, it actually uh, applies to every single lifestyle change you want to make in your life. So start slow, see what's reasonable to you and take it from there one step at a time. Just remember that. So if you're using evaporated milk, the one thing you can do is maybe uh, uh, you know, try to use fat-free milk or reduced fat milk, uh, or instead of regular whole milk, try to use 1% or 2%. So start with you know, 2% milk. Uh, then if you, whenever you're comfortable with that, uh, you know, start with low fat, which is 1%, and then move to skim milk, see how it goes. Or even try different other options, milk, um, a plant-based option too, uh, based on your lifestyle and your, and your health conditions. Ice cream, instead of going for ice cream, go for sherbet, uh, sherbets, you know, they're great options. Uh, try, try some frozen yogurt, that's another great option. Or so try low-fat milk ice cream. 
or if you really enjoy ice cream try to limit it you know have that ice cream day you know like sunday or saturday let's say saturdays are my ice cream day and i'm going to have a little bit of ice cream do not indulge but still at the same time have enough so that it satisfy you rather than having ice cream every single day just have it have it on one day a week or something like that what will happen is you're not only restricting the amount of sugar and fats you're consuming you're also actually uh, creating more uh, more enjoyment around the ice cream because you're going to look forward to having that cup of you know that uh, serving of ice cream every week so uh, you know it's just a human mindset right when it comes to uh, you know indulging in a, in a food that you enjoy food is more than just eating food is an experience it's it's there is emotions attached to it so you have to you have to respect that part of it too if you're using whip, uh, you know, whipping cream, use the you know, low-fat versions of it. If you're using sour cream, use low-fat uh, yogurt. I have tried this so many times and tell you, and it tastes delicious. You won't even know that I have made those adjustments. And I'll just give you one tip on it. If you're using low-fat yogurt, go for Greek yogurt because it tends to be much more creamier in texture. So it's, it reminds you a little bit of a sour cream. So give that a try. I have used that on my salads. I have used that in my Mexican dishes. I have used that in some of the dips I have made. Uh, so again, it's just, it, it's, it's wonderful. So give that a try. Cream cheese, you can of course take a get lighter cheeses um, or fat-free cheeses if possible. Uh, in terms of regular cheeses, you know, go for reduced fat option. Uh, low calorie options uh, are really good. Um, you know, use cottage cheese. They are really good option. As I told you before, you can basically replace your cottage cheese with cottage cheese, but you just have to be very, uh, you know, uh, strategic about it. Use it with the ingredients uh, where, there, where the uh, you know, ricotta cheese is not the main ingredient, but it's just one of the other ingredients that you're adding. And make sure if you're adding cottage cheese, you're adding sauce, uh, like for a lasagna, or if you're adding dip, then make sure that it's more, uh, you know, creamier in texture with other ingredients. Add your fresh herbs to give it even more punch of flavor. So, you know, become more strategic, uh, strategic on how you want to use this because cottage cheese is really unsung hero in dairy family. And I really hope you give this a try, this ingredient a try. Again, whole milk cheeses, part skim, low fat cheeses are always a great option. Ricotta is also cottage cheese, as I said before. If you're using coffee creamer, try using milk instead because coffee creamer tends to be very high in sugar and it tends to be very high in fat. So, you know, try to use low fat milk instead and add your own sweetener, uh, you know, because there's no way you can add so much sweetener as compared to what you already have in your coffee creamer. You cannot remove sugar from the creamer, but you can uh, use the unsweetened one and you can add your own sweetener. That is always any time better option, right? Okay, so this brings us to the last segment of uh, the video and this is focused on one of my favorite recipe that I, I like to make in summertime and that's fruity frozen yogurt barks. Um, they're basically sliced frozen yogurts that I make at home with very, very few ingredients. And you can be so flexible with this recipe. Pick the uh, uh, fruits you like, you know, pick the, pick the kind of yogurt you like, pick the sweetener that you prefer, pick the, pick the flavoring you want to add. So you can, you can really get creative with how you want to make this recipe. This is a very good recipe, especially for children if, if you know, they are asking for snacks. This is going to be a very healthy option. It's still going to fill up their belly, give them satisfaction of having ice cream like product. And at the same time, you know there is a good amount of nutrition present in that food. So um, it's not going to be just added calories. It's going to be packed, uh, it will be full of good nutrients. So, all right, I'm going to start playing the recipe. Um, and I hope uh, you give this a try and add your own twist to it and share, uh, share it in the comment box. I would love to know your own creation and maybe take a picture if you want. We will now make our fruity frozen yogurt bark. This is a very good snack item you can have for summer especially. Uh, 
and it is very healthy, very, very quick to make and needs very few ingredients. And you can use your pantry items to actually make these. So um, you will definitely need some fr um, some fruits. I have canned peaches here. I have blueberries. You can also use frozen fruits if you want. You just need to thaw that. And in, ca in case of um, peaches or canned uh, fruits, you need to remove the water uh, from it. Uh, so you make sure you do that. Um, the other main item you're going to need is actually the yogurt. I try to use Greek yogurt because it tends to be really more creamy. So when you actually freeze it, it tastes even more creamier, just like your frozen yogurt does. So I use that. Uh, as you can see, it's a low fat option. Uh, pick whichever brand you like. And also it's a plain one too. I like that option too, mostly because I can add all the flavors I want and I'm not restricted if I buy, um, as if I was to buy strawberry yogurt or any other flavored yogurt. So I can always add my flavorings. I can always add my sweeteners to adjust the flavor. So I like to have that freedom. So I always use plain yogurt. Um, just, uh, just to see what the nutrition fact looks like for this is they're 130 calories for three fourth of a cup. And so that's actually a good amount of calories because the amount of product it's going to make, it, you may actually be able to have two or three servings of this. Um, also look at the amount of protein it's about 32 uh, percent very very good amount of protein so again this is very filling and also very good in protein um it has a mo much more restrictive amount of sweetener and then you have freedom to use as any kind of sweetener that you like so you can go for the artificial sweeteners of your choice or you can use some other kind of sweeteners you prefer for the flavoring for this uh, um, yogurt bar, I'm using vanilla um, extract. And for sweetness, I'm using maple syrup. Sometimes I use agave, some local honey is great. I'm running out of it, so I need to buy that. Um, try to use more liquid option, mostly to, because it's a cooler temperature uh, ingredient. So it's gonna mix much better if it's in a, in a liquid consistency as compared to the solid consi consistency of a sugar or brown sugar, etc. So, you know, uh, pick the uh, sweetener that you like. Stevia is a great option and other artificial sweetener that you use can be used for that instead of these kind of sweeteners. So again, very, very simple recipe. And again, this is just a one uh, specific example I'm giving you with blueberry and peaches. Make it your own, make it how you like to have it. So the other thing that I, um, I use is a baking pan uh, with a parchment paper or a wax paper, whatever I have at home. Um, and I spread it at the bottom uh, with a little bit of uh, paper at the edge because I'm going to pour uh, all my mixture in there and going to freeze it for a couple of hours. Once it is frozen, uh, it will be very easy for me to peel off because of this uh, layer of parchment paper or wax paper. So um, comes in very handy. So, you know, you can set it up like this. You use any pen that you like. So just to give a heads up on that. Now let's start assembling everything. So the first thing first, I'm going to use our yogurt. So I'm going to use about three fourths of a cup this is a one cup me measuring cup. Again, it doesn't have to be very, very accurate. This is just to give you an idea. You can go with the flavoring that you enjoy. So this is about three fourths of a cup. I'm going to add this right here. And then I am going to add a few drops of vanilla extract. Just eyeball it. Uh, and then again, adjust your sweetness. So this spoon is about uh, one and a half tablespoon. So I'm just going to use about one tablespoon of sweetener, add a little bit more, however you like. Um, I'm gonna mix it up real quick. Make it as nice and smooth as possible. 
and then I'm going to add my peaches. I'm going to keep, keep stirring this till it is nicely assembled. And now the, there are only two things that we need to add. And that is blueberries. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to try to remove the liquid, uh, the thawed liquid of blueberry. I'm going to use that liquid though. But for now, I'm just going to use blueberries. I'm gonna very gently just fold the mixture. I'm not gonna do it too tight because I love the swirl pattern that happens. And when you, uh, you know, you spread it, that swirl pad pattern becomes very evident. So you can use that. And there you go, I've added the liquid. Again, I am barely touching this because I want that color to stay and create a pattern. Now, easy to go. We are going to spread this mixture on the sheet with parchment paper or wax paper, whatever you have. And then you're gonna spread it just a little bit and make a nice and thin layer. I'm gonna have some more liquids. I'm gonna just top it off. And then there's one more ingredient I like to add on my um, barks is just a drizzle of chia seeds. Chia seeds uh, is very, very good in heart healthy fats. It's also very good in some of the minerals. Uh, so, you know, I always try to add it as and when possible. It almost tastes like chia seeds on this bark tastes more like uh, a strawberry seed. So, you know, because we're using berries in that, it makes more sense. So. Again, uh, as you can see, uh, I have just spread this here. I'm just gonna tap it a little bit to make it more even. And I am actually going to put this in the freezer for three to four hours till it all gets solid. solid. And then I'm gonna cut them in squares and I'm going to layer them with parchment paper in a freezer bag or a freezer container and use it as and when you want to eat. So let me show you what the prepared item looks like because I've already made it to uh, made the item for you. Okay, so as you can see, this looks so pretty. The barks are really nice. You can see the pieces of peaches. Here you can see some blueberries and the entire uh, bark looks so beautiful and purple. So if you are giving this to uh, kids, they might actually enjoy it, but just because of the color that it has. So um, give that a try, see how it goes, make your own combinations um, and you know, enjoy the summer bounty because this is the best time to make these kind of simple recipes uh, and snacks for your kids at home so they can enjoy um, um, snack time at the same time have some nutritious food um, okay so uh, again write in the comment section uh, on what you would like to do with the recipe and combination you would like to do share the content and uh, sorry about the cat noise in the background um, have a wonderful day everyone and follow us on lower shore facebook page thank you so much for hanging we will now make our Thank you so much, uh, everyone, and I hope that we see you again uh, with some of our next uh, upcoming effort. We'll keep you abreast of what's to come uh, in next coming week, and next week, Nicole is actually going to conclude our series, so I hope you're ready for it. Have a wonderful time, and I thank you again for all the support, views, and uh, you know, just to watch our videos uh, and sharing our videos. I truly appreciate it, and I'm sure Nicole does too. Have a wonderful day and stay healthy and have a great spirit in this time and take care of each other. Bye-bye.